Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. With the release of patch 1.2, we have the newest, edgiest of edge lords, with the most fitting of names, Blade, as our newest playable character. In today's video, we'll be sharpening our knowledge about Blade in this ultimate guide for Blade. Ah yes, I know almost nothing about Blade from a story perspective besides the fact that Dan Hung doesn't seem to like him very much and he also seems to follow Kafka around. Fortunately, I do know a lot about him in terms of his capabilities in combat. Blade is a wind DPS focused character who walks the path of destruction. In this guide, I'll be going through his traces, relics, light cones, eidolons, teammates, and more. Let's just cut right to the chase with Blade's kit by talking about his traces. We'll actually start with his skill, Hellscape, wherein he does this stylish pose and enters a buffed state. Using his skill costs both a skill point and 30% of his max HP. At town level 10, Hellscape state provides a very hearty 40% damage bonus to all damage that Blade outputs. Blade will be able to move again immediately after using his skill. While in Hellscape state, Blade's basic attack is enhanced, and this enhanced basic attack is now known as a blast attack. When using his blast attack, he sacrifices 10% of his health to hit the enemy much harder, dealing 40% damage based on his attack stats and 100% of his HP as damage. It also hits adjacent targets for about 40% of the damage dealt to the primary target. His blast attack also does not generate skill points, nor does it consume skill points. In Hellscape mode, while saying it lasts for 3 turns, it actually lasts for 4 blast attacks, because the turn you cast Hellscape doesn't count down his Hellscape's turn counter. Up next is his ultimate, Death Sentence. It costs 130 energy and it's very similar to his blast attack, except that it also adds the amount of HP Blade has lost as damage to the attack, for up to 90% of his max HP. The ultimate also brings his HP to 50% of his max HP. This allows you to either sacrifice more HP to enhance his ultimate's damage if he's over 50% health, or to heal himself a bit if he's under 50% HP. Like his blast attack, Blade's ultimate hits adjacent enemies for about 40% of the primary target's damage. Up next we have his talent. Shuhu's Gift. We can see here near his character icon that Blade can collect up to 5 charge stacks. Once Blade has 5 stacks, he'll immediately launch a follow-up attack dealing 44% attack and 110% max HP worth of damage to every enemy on the field. Blade will generate a stack anytime he consumes his own HP or when he takes damage. This means that using his technique, using his skill, using his blast attack, and getting hit by an enemy will all generate a stack for his talent. However, for his ultimate to generate a stack, he needs to be above 50% HP so that way it brings his HP down to 50%. Let's go through a few more important properties of Blade's kit, including energy generation and breaking power. Blade's unenhanced basic attack, which you won't really be using, generates the standard 20 energy. His blast attack, aka his enhanced basic attack, generates 30 energy, and his skill is unique in that it generates 0 energy. And his talent's follow-up attack generates 10 energy, and of course, like every character in the game, his ultimate generates 5 energy. As for his breaking power, his unenhanced basic attack, which you will actively avoid using, deals the standard 1 break gauge. His blast attack and ultimate both deal 2 break gauge to the primary target and 1 break to the adjacent targets. And his talent deals 1 break gauge to all enemies on the field. Overall, Blade's breaking prowess is decent, but not spectacular. In terms of trace priority, I would level up his basic attack first, since it's also the cheapest to level up, followed by his skill, ultimate, and talent being even evenly leveled. So now that we understand Blade's kit, let's talk about his general playstyle along with some tips, tricks, and rotations. Blade's hit points will constantly fluctuate throughout the battle, often getting concerningly low only to be suddenly healed by his talent. 
You can even save his ultimate and use it as an emergency heal to bring him up from near death to 50% of his HP. Since Blade is an HP scaling character, he will have a large HP pool, but since he's constantly sacrificing HP, it becomes a game of balancing life and death. Blade is also a very skill point friendly DPS character, only using one skill point every four turns to refresh his hellscape duration. Again, his blast attack doesn't generate skill points, so he is still a skill point negative character, just very, very low skill point usage literally once every four times that he goes. Another property of Blades that's important to know is that Blades Talents follow-up attack doesn't count as a new turn if it's activated by Blades Blast Attack or Ultimate. As such, you can take full advantage of one-turn buffs like Branya's skill if things align. In this clip, we were able to buff Blades Blast Attack, Talent, and Ultimate all during this single-turn buff of Branya's skill. We can see here in this Memory of Chaos 10 clip, I tend to keep Blade's rotation simple by just using his Blast Attack, Branya's skill right after on Blade, and then his Blast Attack again. If things align, then sometimes his talent will be buffed by Branya's skill, and if not, that's okay too because he still does really good damage. Honestly, Blade's rotations are pretty simple. Just spam his Blast Attack, and things like his talent and ultimate will come out in due time. Depending on how often Blade gets hit, I find myself usually using 2-3 to three blast attacks for every ultimate and talent used. Because of this, we can see that the majority of his damage does come from his blast attack, especially at Eidolon Zero. Blade's talent also doesn't gain stacks if he has a shield and if the shield fully mitigates the damage. So unfortunately, thick shields that the enemy can't punch through don't really synergize well with Blade's talent, since otherwise, Blade getting hit actually rewards your DPS output by gaining stacks for his talent. Another quick tip is that he will occasionally have some downtime on his skills buff, where he will lose the 40% damage bonus. As such, you want to avoid using his ultimate and, if possible, his talent during that short amount of downtime. Just keep this in mind once every four turns or so. And of course, as with any guide video, we need to next talk about relics. The baseline for this chart is having literally no relic set equipped. Now there's really only one good option for him, and that's the four-piece Longevous Disciple. The Longevous Disciple is literally made for him and provides him an essentially unconditional 16% crit rate. He'll get two stacks immediately by using his skill and then his first blast attack, and since it lasts two turns, he'll keep refreshing the stacks every time. He uses a blast attack for literally 100% uptime. But there is an argument to be made for a couple other options, with one of those options being the two-piece Longevous plus two-piece Eagles. If you have amazing substats on these, like literally 5 additional crit rolls by mixing and matching, mixing and matching is a good temporary option. Finally, the Musketeer's 4-piece has a place if it allows your blade to hit 134 speed, which is a very important speed number. A 134 speed blade can now go twice during the 150 AV, first Memory of Chaos turn, which has a lot of benefits. We'll talk a bit more about this in the stats section as well as in the teammate section. Now the rest of the 4-piece options honestly aren't very good for him, however I did want to talk about the Champion of Streetwise Boxing. At 5 stacks, this thing provides a very very substantial 25% attack. However, we can see that this 25% attack translates to a measly 1.8% increase to Blade's damage. As we can see, Blade scales very poorly off the attack stat. Let's next look at the two-piece relic set options. The baseline for this chart is similar to the previous one with no set equipped. The Rudolent Arena is overall his best option, providing the largest boost to his blast attack damage, which again at Eidolon Zero is where the majority of his damage comes from. However, do keep in mind that you need 70% crit rate in order to take advantage of this thing's secondary passive. And that's another reason why the 16% crit rate from the Longevous is so good on Blade because it helps fulfill this passive. The Inert Salsado is also a reasonable choice, boosting both his talent and ultimate damage more than the Rutilant Arena, but it's not quite as good for his blast attack damage. Funnily enough, because of how well Blade scales off of HP, the Fleet of the Ageless provides a non-negligible 5.4% increase to his blast damage. And equally funny, it provides his team with a small attack boost as well. As for stats, for his main stats you should have a crit body, HP or speed boots, wind damage sphere, and an HP% percent link rope. 
For the body, it's important to keep in mind the passives of the two-piece set that you're using. If you need 70% crit rate, because you're using the Rutilent Arena, then you'll probably want a crit rate body. Otherwise, try to keep your crit ratio at the golden 1 to 2 crit rate to crit damage ratio to maximize the average amount of damage that Blade will output. For the boots, I personally think speed is the better option, especially if you're able to hit 134 to 135 speed. We'll talk more about this later under the team section. For substats, as usual, the most important substats are crit rate and crit damage, with HP% percent also being incredibly good for him. And I do recommend trying to get some speed substats to hit 134 to 135 speed. For example, if you're using the 4-piece Longevous Disciple, you'll need around 6 speed substat rolls with the speed boots to hit that number. But of course, we need to talk about light cones next. Blade is of the Path of Destruction, which means we have the honestly not so great selection of destruction light cones for him. Since you're all pretty sharp like Blade is, his signature light cone, the Unfulfilled Yearning, is unquestionably his best light cone, cutting down all of the competition. This thing provides a ton of crit rate, HP% percent, as well as damage bonus for Blade. This chart has the Super Imposition 1 Unfulfilled Yearning as the baseline. The next best option is the 4 star light cone, a secret vow. We can see that at Super Imposition 5 and if the enemy's HP is greater than Blade's, he'll do 95% of the damage of his signature light cone, which is actually remarkably good. This thing provides up to 80% damage bonus at Super Imposition 5, but unfortunately it is situational and for much of the fight, Blade will have more HP than his enemies. Sadly, after this light cone, all the others are very lacking in comparison. Blade scales very poorly off attack and most of them just provide a lot of attack or are very situational. As such, even some of the 3 star destruction light cones can compete with all the other light cone options for Blade. Anyway, you can see this full chart and honestly, outside of the first two options I mentioned, everything else I think performs very similarly to each other. Alright, we've reached a very important section of this video, which is his teammates. I'm gonna be completely honest with you all, I think there are really only one to two characters that have perfect synergy with Blade, or at least near perfect, with the first character being Branya. Branya provides a ton of bonus damage and crit damage, both of which Blade absolutely loves since he likes to stack crit rate. The free turn that Branya provides Blade is also invaluable, effectively doubling the amount of times he can perform his blast attacks and also building more stacks for his talent and finally getting his ultimate up more frequently. And Blade is also quite good with turn extensions, allowing him to take full advantage of the one turn buff from Branya's skill. The ideal setup is to eventually get Blade up to 135 speed and Branya to 134 speed. This will allow Blade to attack four times during the extended 150 action value first turn in Memory of Chaos. Since both Blade and Branya can maintain their speeds relative to each other as long as you avoid Branya's basic attack, it's possible for them to never be desynced. And thus, this will allow Blade to reliably always have double the turns that he normally would have. This is especially so given how skill point friendly Blade is and how skill point unfriendly Branya is. So that's why these two are really the perfect pair with each other. As for other teammates, a healer is very nice to have with Blade, especially an auto healer like Luo Cha. Bai Lu is notable as well because she can even provide Blade with a small but welcome 10% max HP boost to boost his damage by a little bit. And Natasha's heal per turn will help Blade stay healthy, so really all the healers are good with Blade. Now unfortunately, other supports like Ting Yuan and Asta are decent for him, but since a major component of their buffs lie in providing attack buffs, that buff is basically wasted on Blade. Still, the bonus damage slash energy and speed buffs that they provide accordingly are very good. Now what about other options? Well since Blade is such a skill point friendly character, it's actually recommended to run Blade as a sub DPS character. Take this Blade, Zila, Branya, and Luo Cha team. For this team, I'm able to pick and choose who I need to buff between Blade and Zila as needed. Blade is able to contribute plenty of damage thanks to his high base scalings with HP. Since he barely uses skill points and is able to heal himself, he's also a very independent character that needs almost no support to function. For the first wave in Memory of Chaos 10, my goal was to battery everyone up while also wiping out the first wave in the first turn. We're able to go into the second wave with a full team of ultimates. 
Then we go for a nuke on the giant swishy light robot, and now it's Blade's turn to shine as he spends no skill points to chunk the weird frog things and deal damage to the robot. We got lucky in that this robot thing targeted Luo Cha twice so that the other members don't get imprisoned. Now my goal was to clear out this second wave with as much ultimate charge as possible and also in one turn. Unfortunately, Blade did just enough damage with his blast attack to take out our robot friend. Round 3 was a bit tricky since we now have two thick targets, and unfortunately Blade was the target of the robot's super poke attack, but he takes it like a champ. And the moment he's released from imprisonment, he casually hits everything on the field with his talent for a total of 81,000 damage. Anyway, now it's time to soften up our guardian shadow friend with Blade's abilities. This allows Zila to eventually land the finishing blow on the guardian shadow to complete the first half of memory chaos in zero turns. What's notable about this clear is that all the characters here are at E0 S1 with very mediocre relics and a healer as well. Most zero turn clears aren't running a healer, but Blade's capabilities allow us to do so. As mentioned earlier, thick shields make it so Blade won't gain stacks on his talent while he's getting hit. Now this isn't a huge deal at Eidolon Zero because the majority of his damage doesn't come from his talent, but that's still damage output that's lost by using a thick shielder as a teammate with Blade, like March 7th or Japard. It's also worth noting that while Blade is shielded, his own self-sacrificing HP abilities will still go through the shield and eat away directly at his HP. So overall, while shielders will help Blade stay alive, they do have a small negative impact to his damage output because of the way that his talent works. An example team that I've been having a lot of success with is Blade, Branya, one support, and one healer. Another quick tip is to keep Blade near the tank or other higher aggro characters as that can help him get hit, which also increases his damage output via gaining charges for his talent. Let's quickly blitz through the Eidolon section. His Eidolon 1 really improves his ultimate's damage against a single target, at least based on the way I'm reading it. This will change the missing HP multiplier from 100% to 250%. Let me know if I'm interpreting this correctly, because yeah, that's what I'm getting from this. His Eidolon 2 basically just provides him with 15% more crit rate, which will allow you to dump the extra stats into HP% percent or crit damage. His Eidolon 4 provides 20% max HP each time he goes under 50% HP up to twice per battle. Depending on how this works and how the HP rounding works, and also if the extra 20% HP heals him a bit as well, then it could be pretty quick to stack or it could take a while to stack. Obviously you can see that I haven't tested this yet. Anyway, after some ramp up time this will provide him a very noticeable damage increase to his entire kit. And finally his Eidolon 6 is a bit anticlimactic for such a heavy investment, but it does substantially improve his talent by allowing it to be used much more frequently and doing much more damage. Finally, with Super Imposition 5 Signature Lycone and Eidolon 6, he should be doing around 75% more blast damage, 144% more talent damage, and 180% more ultimate damage in comparison to an E0 S1 blade. We can see that his Eidolons will distribute his damage more evenly between his entire kit instead of it being more favorable to his blast damage at Eidolon 0. So there you go, my first attempt at a bunch of math for a specific character for Honkai Star Rail. I know it's definitely not perfect, but I think it's good enough for me to really make these recommendations. If anything looked off to you, be sure to let us know in the comments below. Blade is a powerful skill point friendly DPS character. However, outside of Branya, right now he is missing an HP buffing support, which can really sharpen his performance into the stratosphere. Blade also lives life dangerously on the edge, as I often found myself worrying about him dying in memory of chaos. Overall, he feels like a very solid win DPS character and he's a lot of fun to use. Anyway, let me know what you think about Blade in the comments below. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.